Welcome to Spoken in Justice, where we put the criminal justice system in the dock. In our opening note, we highlighted an important issue, pivotal in the debate on wrongful convictions, the issue of compensation. As highlighted then, Section 133 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988 provided for compensation where a new or newly discovered fact showed beyond reasonable doubt that there had been a miscarriage of justice. However, Section 175 of the Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act 2014 amended Section 133 with the introduction of subsection 1ZA, which provides a definition of miscarriages of justice and states that for the purpose of subsection 1, there has been a miscarriage of justice in relation to a person convicted of a criminal offence in England and Wales, or in case where subsection 6H applies Northern Ireland, if and only if a new or newly discovered fact shows beyond reasonable doubt that the person did not commit the offence. And references in the rest of this part to a miscarriage of justice are to be construed accordingly. On 22nd of January 2014, whilst the Antisocial Behavioural Bill was discussed in the House of Lords, these were the words of Baroness Kennedy. To ask people to prove their innocence beyond reasonable doubt is an affront to our system of law. The common law system, so beloved of this house and indeed beloved of me. It flies in the face of one of our key legal principles, which acknowledges that it is very difficult for people to prove their innocence. It is very difficult for people to prove that they are innocent beyond reasonable doubt. Prove that you didn't do it. Prove that you didn't kill your baby. Prove that you didn't leave a bomb in the pub. Prove that you didn't set that fire. In a few cases, DNA can prove innocence and in a few, an alibi can be bulletproof. But I assure you, Lordships, that those cases are rare. The provision was passed anyway. Mr. Nealon and Mr. Hallam, who had their convictions quashed respectively in 2012 and 2013, have challenged this provision both in the UK and before the European Court of Human Rights. Mr. Nealon was convicted of attempted rape and sentenced in 1997 to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of seven years. He ended up, however, spending 17 years in prison as he continued to maintain his innocence throughout thus being discounted by parole for possible release. His conviction was eventually quashed in 2013. His conviction was based on eyewitness identification alone and quashed on the basis that subsequently discovered uh, DNA analysis from an unknown male rendered his conviction unsafe. Mr. Alam was convicted of murder in 2004. He was only 17 years old then. He spent seven years in prison and his conviction was finally quashed in 2012. His conviction was also based on eyewitness identification 
and an, an alibi which was not corroborated at the time but quashed on the basis of new photographic evidence retrieved from Mr. Halam Fon, which cast doubt on the identification and supported the alibi originally provided. Both applied for compensation under Section 133, but their application were refused. The applicants both sought permission to apply for judicial review and uh, eventually they also applied to the Court of Appeal as their uh, judicial review was uh, refused. Judgment from the Divisional Court was handed down in June 2015, dismissing their claims. And in 2016, the Court of Appeal agreed with the Divisional Court but allowed permission for appeal to the Supreme Court. They both appealed to the Supreme Court on the basis that the provision is in breach of Article 6 of the European Convention of Human Rights, but the Supreme Court in January 2019 refused the appeals by a majority of 5 to 2 and stated that the presumption of innocence is not affected by the test that the Secretary of State applies when deciding whether a wrongfully convicted person is entitled to compensation. Both applicants have subsequently brought their case to the European Court of Human Rights. In a press release issued on the 3rd of March 2023, the European Court of Human Rights stated that uh, the chambers to which the case of Nilan and Alam had been allocated had relinquished jurisdiction in favour of the Grand Chamber of the Court of European Court of Human Rights. According to Article 30 of the European Convention on Human Rights, Chambers can relinquish case to the Grand Chambers whether a case either raises a serious question affecting the interpretation of the Convention or the resolution of a question might have a result inconsistent with the judgment previously delivered by the Court. In a previous case, in the case of Alain versus the UK, though the European Court of Human Rights decided that there was no violation of Article 6 in that particular case, it noted that whilst Article 6, that's the uh, presumption of innocence, imposed um, certain procedural requirements in the context of a criminal trial, it also had a second aspect, which was aimed at protecting individuals who had not been convicted of a criminal charge from being treated by public officials and authorities as though they were in fact guilty. Where criminal proceedings are concluded, an applicant seeking to rely on Article 6 in subsequent proceedings would have to show that there was a link between the two sets of proceedings. The necessary link was present in this case because the right to commence compensation proceedings was triggered by the applicant's acquittal in criminal proceedings. And the authorities and courts making and reviewing the decision on compensation had to have regard to the judgment handed down in criminal appeal. So Article 6, the court decided, was therefore applicable. However, the referral now to the Grand Court could dangerously mean that the court may divert, looking at Article 30, from its previous judgment in Allen but also could have a positive aspect 
if the emphasis is placed upon the fact that the Neil and Hallam cases may raise a serious question which affect the interpretation of the Convention. The cases have now been listed before the Grand Chambers for the 5th of June 2023. We will certainly keep you updated. If you've liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Also, join our community at spokeninjustice.net to have your say as to the future content of this channel. We look forward to usher you as we sit and rise in this unique triumph.